If I had to describe Paul Pogba's uh, time at Manchester United uh, in one word, it would be empty. Mishandled. Wasted. Paul Pogba was essentially a household name among scouts, really, from the time he was 14 or 15. It was such a talent. It was, it was regarded as this, the generational talent, really, from French football. He was, he was billed as a new Patrick Vieira because he was seen as a player that would dominate midfield like Vieira used to do for France and Arsenal. He was, he was the guy that United saw as being their future. It's a difficult time for Pogba because he has to rebuild his career and reputation again. Young Paul Pogba was, was just the best player in his generation in, in Europe. It's as simple as that. The best player in the, in the players born in 1993 that France had. I think also in Europe, people have to understand how good he was as a kid. It was something we never seen before in his position, the, the physical aspect of his game, how good he was technically, the charisma, the leadership, the personality, the intelligence on the pitch, the fact that he could see everything before everyone else. It was crazy. You would see him as a 12, 13, 14 year old. It was, it was a shock. You would be shocked. So very quickly, all the best clubs in Europe were after him. When you're that good, it goes beyond Paris. It goes beyond France. It goes all around Europe. It was just too good. It was so good. It made sense for United to go and get the best. It made sense for Pogba to join the best. At the time, they were the best. It felt like the perfect marriage. He went to United and immediately it was, it was a standout player. It was a, the classic lazy kind of stereotype, he's the new Patrick Riera because he's French, he's a midfielder. Yeah. But that was what the tag he, he came with, but he, he didn't really develop into that player. He was a creative player in a great youth team with I think Jesse Lingard, Ravel Morris, who was a fantastic talent oh, at the time. Sure but it was, he lived in Sale outside of Manchester and he, 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 the friends he made at the time are still his friends now. People like Lingard, Ryan Tony Cliff, who went on to Fulham, I think. Still quite close to these guys. So the, the thing with Pogba is a big superstar in the sense of a global name, but he's still very down to earth, very kind of connected to his friends from the time. So I think Jules might attest to this. He's, he's, not, he's got a superstar mentality, but he's still very close to people he grew up with yeah. at, at, in Manchester as well as in Paris. Yeah, he's very a man of his people. He kind of sticks, yeah. sticks to him. And, and I suppose that creates a, a pretty cool atmosphere, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And like, I think the most example we you know, his mum is very mm. eighty percent of the time in He's Manchester. a mama's boy, isn't I know, he? Which is really, yeah, his wife doesn't mind, which is great, but <laughs> I mean I mean, you know. Uh, but this is what he does. I think he needs the people around, whether they're friends from Manchester, friends from Paris, friends from Le Havre, who he still has, you know, close ties with, or with, from the national team. His dad, before he passed away, didn't travel as much. But certainly the mum and the brothers, yeah, I think he needs he needs that around him. He's, he needs that mm. little cocoon to do well. We have to also put in this man right here, Sir Alex Ferguson, because I think the Pogba-Sir Alex Ferguson relationship helps to explain a lot in what we're trying to understand of his two times at Manchester United. Um, how would you explain it then, Aki? And, and how, I guess, you know, Fergie did help in his development, for better or for worse? And there's not many bad things that Sir Alex, I suppose, has done. Well, it's interesting to use the word, the kind of phrase father figure, and that's what Fergie like to be with his young players, you know, the, mm. the class of 92. I mean, Ronaldo kind of well, yeah. talks about him like a father. Ronaldo, Neville, Beckham, Scholes, all these young players that have come through the ranks, but it was never a father figure at Pogba. The, the father figure at Pogba was Mina Raiola, and that caused a problem with yeah. United because Ferguson just couldn't deal with Raiola, who obviously was his agent at the time. And that created the rift because Ferguson wanted Pogba to be patient, to, you know, develop like the younger players have, but he was impatient. He wanted to play, and, and the team at the time, I think, I think it was maybe 2012 when he left and the team at the time was clearly needing young midfielders that, that the players that were playing at the time were, were getting on it. I think Skulls and Giggs were still playing late 30s and Pogba was frustrated and, and Ferguson was frustrated by Pogba's attitude, Pogba's desire to play, Raiola's attitude to getting more money. So the father figure thing never really worked and rather than be the guy that would guide his career, Ferguson probably held it back by not playing him when he should have done. That, that time was a classic example of how Ferguson had kind of maybe grown outgrown the game, I was too old for the game. The game was changing at the time. Mm. And prior to that, we had the Carlos Tevez situation where I think Kia Jarabshin was Tevez's representative. And at that point, players and their representatives were getting more power and they weren't as frightened of a manager like Ferguson as they would be 10 years ago. So I don't think Ferguson knew how to handle the modern player and the modern player's representative. 
And that was another reason why they lost Tevez and they lost Pogba. There was also a development, it's something Pogba referenced. I mean, I went to see him at Juventus in, in 2014, 2015, and he, he referenced the fact that at Juventus, he was going to fight for a spot in the midfield, which at the time was very strong, very settled pros, Claudio Marchisio, Andrea Pirlo, and uh, Arturo Vidal. Whereas at United, it was the age where there was a generational change. I mean, Carrick, I think, was still in the mix. But it was also obvious at that time that Sir Alex wasn't going to stick around forever, and he was on his way out too. And, you know, whereas at Juventus, he was going to work with Max Allegri, uh, well, Conte initially, who would then leave, but, you know, I'd won two titles. So it, it was just a different environment. And again, whether it was Pogba justifying the move or whatever to himself and to others, I think most people would agree that that was really good for his development as a player. And to add to the frustration, we talked about Giggs and Scholes being still on yeah. the team. The, pe the people that Ferguson was putting faith in were Tom Cleverley, Anderson. Darren Fletcher was, was kind of battling his illness at the time. So, <laughs> yeah, Pog was, Pog, well, this is it. Pogba's frustration was there. The younger yeah. players that were coming through at the time weren't as good as Pogba is, was, and he felt he would be. So that would explain his frustration that I understand why the, the legends of Giggs and Scholes and even Carrick were not being moved on, but Cleverly, Anderson, and a couple of others, it was like, you know, this guy deserves a chance and he wasn't given it. I think he, was, I think he made like two or three games, that was it. He went there thinking, I'm 16, I'm the best 16 year old in Europe, which was true. And give me two years and then I should, I should play for that team. He didn't want to start every single game and play every single competition. But he felt, I can see a training, I train with the first team enough to realize that I'm better than most of those guys. Why am I not playing? And I think where it clashed with Sir Alex, and I, I, for a long time I thought he would never go back to United mm -hmm. until Sir Alex is involved within the club because he's still a bit better about what happened the first spell. Because where they clash is he was saying, I can't, why, why are you not playing me? I, I'm good enough. Everybody can see it. Why are you not playing? And, and Sir Alex was like, take a bit of time. We'll wait. We'll wait. And he didn't want to wait. When the possibility for Juventus to get him from Manchester United, where things hadn't worked out, and to get him as a free agent, people people jumped all over it because they knew that they were getting um, they knew they were getting a special talent. When he went to Juventus, he, need, he needed still a bit of discipline. And yes, he was very good. Yes, he was impatient. He felt that he never really got his chance at United, which is true. But he still had so much to learn and so much to improve on that Juve was perfect. There was the leadership from the older players, so much experience, so many things that he could copy, learn from, integrate, study, develop. It was just a perfect school. It was the perfect last bit of school before you graduate and become this amazing football professional player. You, you, you start in France. You through Manchester, now you're at Juventus. How, how was the impact with this club? I came here and um, I wanted to show myself as well, you know. The first training, I, I've learned a lot. With Pirlo, with the Marquisio and, uh, and Vidal. And you know, the, the football is quite different here at Juventus, so I had to, to look at them every, every day in training. I, I tried to, to take uh, the, the best of them. And uh, you see the aggressivity of uh, Arturo Vidal and uh, then the passing of, uh, of Pirlo and the, the, the quality technically and of, uh, of Marquisio, you know, I try to, to mix this <laughs> and uh, to, 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 to give me uh, the chance to, to be uh, like, to, to have everything. ¿Qué significa esto para ti? Eso es mi equipo. Mi equipo, mi familia, eh, donde estoy jugando. Eh. Contra más, no, Creo, ya no. No sé si ya sabe cuál es, seguramente. No sé si sabe. Se lo va a poner más o menos por aquí. A no ver. Conozco, no lo conozco. No lo conoce, dice, no lo conozco. Pero, pero tú estuviste ahí. Sí, sí eso es mi prim primero, la primera familia. Primero, para mí. Si José Mourinho toma el teléfono y te dice, Paul, quiero que juegues conmigo en Manchester United, ¿cuál es tu respuesta, José Mourinho? Mi respuesta y No sé. No sé cuándo. <risa> vemos, vemos. Que descanses sí. y en septiembre te veremos con... No, ¿Te quieres llevar una a tu casa? ¿Eh? ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál te quieres llevar? Llévate las una. Las tres y se las tres. Las tres. Gracias, Paul Pogba. Gracias. 
When Paul Pogba came back to Manchester United, I was absolutely over the moon. I was 100% sure that this was the special talisman, the, the big name star player that Manchester United was needing uh, to go forward and get back to those glory days. Paul Pogba off the pitch, honestly, is just an absolute delight. I've gotten the, I've had the privilege to interview people like Zlatan Ibrahimovic, David Beckham, and even then, and even after all these years, I would say that my interview that I did with Paul Pogba and Romelu Lukaku back in 2016 is probably still my favorite interview to date. We were actually just talking off camera, a bit of banter, and we were playing rock, paper, scissors because it was absolutely scorching hot outside, and we said, you know, it'd be good to get in the pool. So they said, okay, would you get in the pool if you lost rock, paper, scissors? And I said, I'm a good sport, but I'm not gonna lose. So we did it off, but everyone said, no, let's do it on camera. I promised I would cannonball in there, so I was getting ready to run up, but clearly Pogba's way was a bit more efficient. I just didn't expect it to come that swiftly. But either way, it was a refreshing dip, and I thank him for it, because I was like one step away from my heat stroke there. It's kind of like uh, Neymar, where on the pitch, you don't really get to see how special they are off the pitch. He's someone that just brings you in, um, has a nice camaraderie. He's the life of the party, but he kind of spreads that joy around as well. And like I said, it's just unfortunate that you don't see enough of that on the pitch. Bringing Paul Pogba back, even though he was a golden boy in Turin, um, why did United want him back? Why, what, what do you think Mourinho was hoping he'd bring? I'm not sure he's a Mourinho signing, to be honest. I, I, from what I gather, from what was told to us in the past, I mean, I remember being at a, a dinner with Ed Woodward probably in 2014, and at that point he was saying how much he was trying to get him back. So th this was Louis van Gaal time that they wanted to get Pogba back. So this was a club decision. I think it was a, a decision by the club to have a commercial signing reclaim that kind of commercial space and a global brand. It just so it happened to coincide with Mourinho coming because at the time Man City had had Pep Guardiola and United felt they needed to make a, a statement on and off the pitch. So Mourinho came in, Pogba came in and Mourinho was on board with it because he thought Pogba was a great player. But I don't think it was Jose came in, I want Pogba. That deal was already in train a good year, eight months before that happened. Coming back now, I think the fans were so excited. I personally was so excited. There was nothing, there was no doubt in my mind that this was going to work. I was like, this is definitely going to be his time at Manchester United. Given the state of the team, he could have walked in there and been that big man, you know, been that kind of had that aura. Um, did you think it just made sense to go back? Yeah, I did. He did as well. He, he was convinced this was the right move. He wanted to prove a point. By at the right back, time. Yeah, at the right time, coming back to Old Trafford, coming back to England and show them, you know, you let me go. Well, I, I left. Look what I became in Turin, now I'm coming yeah. back and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to lead you to greatness again kind of thing. Uh, and I was convinced it would work. I really was. I think he was also told that they would build a strong team around him, that he was the future. And I think he felt that in a way they let him down a bit because some of the signing were, were never good enough. Uh, it was a big investment on him and I think he's partly to blame for why he was not as successful as he should have been. But he certainly there was a feeling that they promised a lot and in the end it didn't really come. For me it went wrong when United signed Alexis Sanchez because that just changed the way they played. And I remember seeing United play at Tottenham maybe a week or two after Sanchez arrived and Jose played Pogba in a holding role in front of the back four and he just wasn't suited to it. And he, I think he took him off, remember he, had, he took yeah, him yeah. off at, at Wembley, they had an argument on the touchline. Mm -hmm. And it never really, this kind of public show of dissent. And it went, and that was only 18 months into his time at United. And from that point on, it, the sniping started, yeah. the briefing started, Mourinho had to go, Pogba had to go back, and it, it never recovered from that. No secret to the, the rift, so to speak, between mm. Pogba and Jose Mourinho at Manchester United. So hit or miss for him to leave. No way. Manchester United would be absolutely crazy to get rid of Pogba. How can we get the best out of him or get him to be the best he can be in a United shirt? I don't think it's about us getting the best out of him. It's about him giving the best he has to give. He's swanning around as if, hey, I'm Paul Pogba and I'm back in the Premier League and you should be happy. He's not a patch at the moment on Kevin De Bruyne. Mm. Not a patch. And I think the World Cup is um, the perfect um, habitat for a player like him to give the best. Why? Because he's closed for a month. 
where he can only think about football. He's embarrassed them during games by taking them off. Well, then he gives them the captaincy. Hold on, hold on. Now he's turning around and saying that, by the way, I made such a big mistake of not giving them just a captaincy, but giving them the second captaincy. I mean, he's absolutely... He's making a mockery of Pogba. Players in the World Cup, they really feel that extra commitment with the country, with the people, that extra responsibility that makes them, by the emotional point of view, to be sometimes even overcommitted. So they play for the team and only for the team. And the team is the most important thing and they do everything to try to succeed. Listen, Pogba knows perfectly well that if it comes down to him or Mourinho, the club are going to choose Pogba, OK? I'm fed up with making the comments about potentially leaving and my contract's running out and I don't really get on with the coach. Mm. I just, I just, I just don't like this anymore. Overall, in this time too, under Jose, do you feel like um, his spats with Jose, this kind of stuff, the fact that again, fans were seeing him as a completely different person with France and not seeing that with Man United, was that also a nail in the coffin in the fans' minds of, to, of Paul Pogba? Yeah, I think, there's a, I think in a way winning the World Cup was a disservice to Paul when he came back to United because everybody was like, OK, now we're gonna, he's going to do the same thing. And yeah. it was never going to happen. It, it was never worked for what Augie said about the players around him. Also, because by then, it was already, I mean, Mourinho was still there, but not really there. This, that third season was never going to work anywhere. And I think the players knew it. And I think, I think Pogba also had a very short summer, which is the case when you win the World Cup and then you come back, it's too early. I think he wanted to do really well, mm -hmm. it, too much in the sense that he put a lot of pressure on himself. Yeah. And then from that on, very early in September, it just unraveled completely. And I think f there was no, the only, the only solution and answer was to sack Mourinho and the players were always going to win that battle. And after that, when Solskjaer arrived, we saw a much better Paul Pogba, by coincidence, of course, when, when things became much happier within the camp at United, not just for Pogba, but for many others. Jose Mourinho was sacked because it all became too toxic. It became a kind of battle of wills, battle of egos. And I think when that's the case, it's usually the big name player that, that wins out because he's much more of an asset to the club. He created the toxic aspect of the dressing room of the club by falling out with players, by being very difficult to work with. It's the syndrome of his third season that we've seen at other clubs before. I don't think that Pogba had any direct involvement in, in Mourinho's dismissal. I don't, I don't think he had that power at United, but obviously he was not performing on the pitch. He was the big star, he was the big signing the, the club record by prior to Lukaku arriving. I think the fact that he couldn't perform under Mourinho to his best was a, a reason why the club ultimately got rid of Mourinho. It got to a point where he could not do any more with Mourinho. This was not, they were just not compatible anymore. And Mourinho was too negative and they, their, their fallout was too big. I guess the antidote of that is to find the other extreme, which is someone always in a good mood, always smiling, always positive. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was, was that. He was not a good tactician. He was not even a good manager. But he had this very sort of happy going image of him, the, the happy guy. It was perfect for him. This is exactly what he needed to, to get his season going again, to get his game going again to be finally happy again. This, is, this was perfect for him. Right, so out went Jose and came Olegon a soul shire now after. And this kind of felt like a breath of fresh air for Paul, didn't it? It did. Really much. They knew each other, obviously, from the youth teams. Uh, they were very close before. And it's just the kind of manager that Paul likes, where one of the first things he said to him is like, how much he loves him and how great he is and how great they're going to work together. And that's exactly what not just Paul needed, I think the whole dressing room and maybe the whole club needed. And we saw, even if he was an easier schedule, really, it was, I mean, the, the six first wins where mm -hmm. with all the goals they scored was, the opposition was, it was the hardest field and, you know, like <laughs> rubbish team like that. So it was, he made it easier for them. But it was true. This is what they needed and Paul really welcomed it. I think he realized pretty quickly the limitations as well mm -hmm. of Solskjaer, but certainly in terms of the relationship that they had and that he had with the, with the rest of the dressing room, it was far, far more positive than the, the toxic environment that was there before. Did you guys think this was 
exactly what Paul Pogba needed to finally see this Paul Pogba that we were all waiting for at United. No, I thought he needed a good coach and he didn't get one in Solskjaer. I, I appreciate... No, no, look, I, there are... Hopefully all is not watching. I said limitation, you said yeah, no, 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 I got with you with him. <laughs> yeah, obviously, you needed somebody who would build a relationship with him and he had him and he liked yeah. him and he respected him. And, and I think a lot of people respect, from what I hear, but you know, a lot of players still respect Solskjaer as a person. But equally, this is football. You got to find your position on the pitch. You got to put people in the, so that you know the whole becomes bigger than the sum of its parts. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, for, for a million mitigating circumstances, I felt like was not able to do that. It's, it's not rocket science. You've got the whole previous career of Pogba. You know what positions he has thrived in, either playing kind of in, in the two with a pure defensive midfielder, a little bit with France, or when he played with Juventus as an inside left player. That's what he did. And instead, the last year we saw him playing out on the wing, we saw him, I mean, it's not, like I don't feel like it's necessarily that, if he is important, if he is central to your project, and again, maybe another factor was that somebody else came along last summer who becomes more central to United's project. But whatever it is, like you as a manager have to make it work. And he didn't, he wasn't able to make it work. Not entirely his fault. Doesn't make him a bad person. But yeah, no, I don't think that helped. I, I totally agree with Gab. Solskjaer was maybe a short term fix, maybe a month long project that would have just helped him clear his head, get away from the Mourinho situation and then focus on a coach who can actually make them better. Because one of Solskjaer's faults was that he didn't make anyone better. And it, you look at the players that he left behind, I don't think you could argue that Solskjaer coached any of them to be better players. And that's what Pogba needed. He needed, he needed coaching himself and he needed a structure around him of players who were coached properly, who were tactically organised. Because one of Pogba's problems is that if he's not in a disciplined setup, he can kind of, he can wander around and he can, he can drift around. And, but Solskjaer's system allowed him to do that. And it, to the detriment of Pogba and to the detriment of Man United, and ultimately to the detriment of Oligan Solskjaer. Tactically, it's a bit all over the place. It looks very much like when we kids and we play at school in the playground and you pick a team and then you basically give the ball to the best player on your team and hope that he does something good. It's all going to source guy. These guys didn't come to play for a guy who before this was managing Mulder. They came for the money. Paul has been there now for a while and of course he, he wants to win more trophies. So he doesn't, he doesn't know what to do with Pogba. Maybe the best position of Pogba right now for Manchester United it may be on the bench. If Paul Pogba is not good enough, is he not finding his position in the team? Well, he's got to sit on the bench. It's quite easy. If I had his level of talent, I'd be looking at myself in the mirror and I'd be saying, why am I on the bench in this very average Man United side? It's down to us to win the trophies and then let's see who, uh, who will be part of the, the team going forward. But maybe if they had what I would call a proper manager, hmm, things might be a little different from. I can see why he's going to want to go. Solskjaer, in many ways, was was a guy that knew Pogba from the past and knew him as a young player, but it, it didn't mean that he could make him a better player. It just meant he could get his head right after... Somebody told me when, when Mourinho left United, Solskjaer was regarded as the... They called it the anti-venom. Yeah. And that's what Solskjaer was. But <laughs> you need something else after a while because you can't keep going with anti-venom. You need something... It, it would have been perfect as an assistant coach to a really good manager, basically. But that I mean, have with yeah. all that said, I mean, not trying to go on the defensive for Ole right now, but I mean... At this point, Paul Pogba had won a World Cup. He was no longer a straight France had won a World Cup. He Pogba hadn't won well, the World Cup. This is the problem. Everyone, oh, he won the World Cup, but studies well, Stefan Givarch played for France. There's a lot of players. Cleberson won a World Cup with Brazil. Doesn't mean it, <laughs> you, we have to get away from this. Set. No, he won Paul a World Pogba Cup. Was very good. Yeah, he was instrumental yeah. in that World but they didn't Cup. But they didn't win it because of it because of him. But yes, he won the World Cup. Yeah. He, Sorry, won, he was a World Cup winner, though. He's not a spring chicken. He had been at Man United for time and time again. Um, he knows exactly what is needed. And, and he's, he was a senior player, let me put it that way. He was a senior player, or at least this figure that had this aura at Manchester United, kind of how Zlatan was, kind of how Cristiano Ronaldo is. And you see how they almost take on that responsibility, take on that team on their back and do it. Shouldn't Pogba have kind of done that, despite the fact well, that Ole was not this top-tier coach? He kept getting injured too, which is another yeah, thing we haven't the mentioned yet. That's mm -hmm. when the bad injury starts. But also, he, he, he was generally fit for most of the Mourinho mm -hmm. era. And then he started picking up these injuries under Solskjaer. Maybe it would have happened if he'd stayed fit for a prolonged period of time. You say that could he have led, but look at the players he was leading. They weren't good enough. 
they just weren't good enough to win anything. I mean, look at Kevin De Bruyne at Man City, who went to City a year before Pogba. What, look at what De Bruyne has achieved and what player he's become and the leadership figure that he's become. And everyone at City respects and adores De Bruyne for what he brings. And Pogba could have been that player at Man United if he was surrounded by better players. But you can see De Bruyne individually, despite of what's going on around him, you could see him being that star, just like how we see United having a really bad game often now. But Cristiano Ronaldo will stand out as being the only good one. How many of those kind of individual performances did we see from Paul when he was fit? Um, and I think that's that's the question that a lot of fans have. It's like, well, okay, we understand what's going around you is not good, but you just shine. You shine. There's different positions, though. You can't compare mm. a striker who scores goals to save his game or, you know, help the team or even De Bruyne to create everything. And then a more defensive midfielder like Paul Pogba who needs the structure that Mark was mentioning, which is true. And then players around him as well to help him being able to boss a midfield, for example, which he can't do. They were good games, the, 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 the two goals against City in the Derby, for example. He scored some key games in that season when they reached the final of the Europa League, the one that they lost yeah. and finished second in the league. Uh, some great goals as well. But overall, it was not enough, partly because of him, for sure. Partly because of the lack of structure and the, mm -hmm. the lack of, of uh, tactical ability from the team and from, from Solskjaer. And uh, yeah, I think Gabby's right. The injuries didn't really help him at, at a key time. And I also feel like this last season, sort of at the end, you know, you lose the Europa League final, you finish second in the league, albeit a million points behind uh, Manchester City, but, you know, you're still second, you can still build on it. He had a year left on his contract at that yeah. stage. And again, United might have put a contract in front of him. We know that they did later and, and whatnot. But you want to get some sense of where are we going? Yeah. You know, who's in charge? I think he already knew probably that the writing was on the wall for Solskjaer. No idea what was happening next. The contract, same money as before. And maybe he didn't he should justify, but at least like if you give him more money, then you know, you you kind of get the sense we're gonna invest more, we're gonna build something. You know, maybe even a sense that Ed Woodward was gonna be moving on, which of course he did a year later. Um, so all these things coming together, you know, at that stage. I thought that last season that he had was was basically a wash. And then he also you know, had injuries on top of that too. And it got, sorry, just quickly, it got really toxic with, with the English media as well. Yes. And on television especially. Where, and United took him off from doing any interviews there yeah, too. It was always his fault. Even when he was yeah. not playing, there was always someone to say, well, you know, it was always Paul Pogba's Pogba. fault. Someone. Always. <laughs> it became a man. It became, it became a joke where yeah. you would say, oh, Paul is not playing, but United lost. Oh, it's, it's Paul's fault. Yeah. Which I think... As strong as he is, and he certainly, trust me, doesn't read the newspapers or listen, but... but It gets to you. Exactly. It comes to you or it's your, you know, it's your family, it's, it's a lot of other things. And, and I just don't think it's a healthy environment for a player, anyone, Pogba or anybody Any else, to really being. express himself like he should. Paul Pogba and Mina Raiola have just been one huge pain in the butt to Manchester United. He can be a fantastic player, but you have to realise that he can be a problem to have him in your squad. Couple of good games, then goes and disappears for three or four weeks. One of the most overrated players in world football right now because his reputation so far exceeds what he's actually done on the pitch. This is the joke, isn't it? In this country of like, oh, it's Pogba's fault. Whatever happened to United, it's Pogba's fault. It's Pogba's fault. And Raiola always tries to pin this on Man United when they've done nothing other than give this guy money and an opportunity. He seems to have to do everything. They seem to point to him all the time. It's Pogba, it's his fault, his fault. A lot of people don't like Pogba because he's fancy Dan, because of the hair, because of the dabbing. Are you sick of dabbing yet? No, never. Yeah. <laughs> Can he do the job of being the torchbearer, which is what Manchester United need him to be? When Man United play poorly, does Paul Pogba drive them and take them over the line? I don't think he does. A bit like this spoiled child who should be told off, I think. There have been players at Man United when things haven't been going well who would die for the club. Is he bothered? Right. He's not bothered. I, look, we all work in the media, we all give opinions all the time, and we all work with ex-pros who give opinions all the time. However, in, in like the united sphere, or whatever you call it, Mark, um, <laughs> it resonates a lot more because I think he truly felt that everything was his fault. Yeah. I think as well, the, the, one of the reasons why those players, that those former players would focus their you know, unhappiness on Pogba was because they knew that he was one of the very few players capable of making them better. That is true. That is so true. 
they're not going to look at Victor Lindelof and criticise him because he ain't capable of making yeah, them better. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. So, so Pogba's point. the guy with the ability. So McTominay never gets criticised for that reason. Exactly. <laughs> because, <laughs> because you can't criticise players who aren't good enough. Because it's not their fault they're not good enough. But, but you know Pogba is. Pogba is, but then it's this kind of contradiction with Pogba. He's good enough, but he's surrounded by players who, who aren't. So imagine being Paul Pogba carrying some of those players and, yeah, and, no, and being able fair. to perform mm -hmm. at your best because... With due respect to Scott McTominay and Fred, they're not in the same league as Paul Pogba. Mm. You don't play with players like that for France. Or look at the players out at Juve. Yeah, yeah. Amazing players, top top players at Man United, surrounded by lower Premier League Championship players. It's not in his league, so that's why it's frustrated for, yeah. for Pogba. But it's, again, he's not blameless. But mm -hmm. you know, he's looking around thinking, "What am I doing here?" I do know people who have worked at Manchester United, um, and they have told me that they that. I think it was surprising on, on more than one occasion how United didn't seem to have Pogba's back mm. ever, really and truly. Okay, did you feel that was the case? And Jules, probably mm. you. Just ever, not even now when things start to get rough, but just ever. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I, th I think there were times when United would, you know, come and defend Pogba. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. I just think that the reason why he's a lightning rod for all the criticism is because United failed yeah. to achieve in that time. It, you can make a comparison. You said then about his entering the last year of his contract and all the kind of noise around it. Well, right now we've got a situation at Liverpool with Mo Salah mm -hmm. entering the final year of his contract. His agent is making, shall we say, interesting kind of, not observations, but he's very kind of clever on social media. Yeah. But nobody's criticising Salah because Salah's delivered for Liverpool. He's delivered goals, he's delivered trophies, so nobody can criticise him for, for not delivering. With Pogba, you can because the, the team and he haven't delivered. So that's why he's such a lightning rod because... You know, he's, he's not delivered what he was expected to do, his fault or not. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was sad because there's a point where too much limitations was, was there to be seen by everyone. The players had lost kind of faith in, in Solskjaer's ability to get the better out of them and the team. His coaches weren't up to the job, Solskjaer wasn't up to the job tactically. The dressing room in, in one hand and Paul was relieved because they all knew it was time for him to go, that he should even have gone where earlier. But they were sad to see him because he, he's a very, very likeable guy and I think a lot of the players, Paul included, liked him. They liked Ole a lot. So when Rolf Ranić came in, he had this kind of impossible job to get the best out of these players and most had switched off under Solskjaer and I think that had happened. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't possible for Ranić to switch him back on again. I don't think he was the best start, I don't think he was the right call, the right choice and I think the players felt it very, very quickly. Do you think Paul's mind was made up that it's time for him to go? I don't think, I don't think so. I think there was a time where he, he, he saw himself potentially extending the contract. He really did. He was very, I think he was very open about anything, about leaving, about staying, about what, they could, what the club could offer him. That was before his house got burglared with, with his children in it, for example, yeah. which didn't help, really, in the sense that, OK, we don't feel safe here. Maybe it's actually the right time mm -hmm. to go. Uh, the fact that United offered something that him and Mino didn't feel was was kind of was an insult, right? Not an insult, <laughs> but they, I think they maybe expected a bit more. Yeah. Which again, after what he did for six years, Fine. is a mm. bit debatable. If really he was due a pay rise, for example, and due a lo another long term contract, I don't know. But certainly, I think he had an open mind at some point, and quite quickly, I think went to like, okay. This is, this is, for me, I need another chapter now. I'm going to be 30 in, 20, in, in 2023. I want to go to, to do something else and go somewhere else. I, I think it's also the, the vibe. There is, yeah. again, there's a, another parallel universe where Rangnick comes in and the team responds to him straight away and they finish top four and go on a run and win the, you know, do something important and Sancho contributes and Rashford's back in the fold and Greenwood doesn't disappear and he's got this young talent around him. And That's a fantasy universe, not a parallel yeah, universe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let, me put it, let me put it this way. When Rangnick came in, even though it was only for six months, United had a, a very clear best case scenario. You don't bring Rangnick, you bring Rangnick in for six months because you think he can introduce certain, you can change things culturally at the club yeah. while getting results and thereby laying the foundation for the next manager. Who, you know, by the way, as we know, Eric Ten Hag not entirely dissimilar to Rangnick in terms of his vision of football, right? Mm -hmm. And when that didn't happen, Pogba might well say, "Well, what am I going to do? What am I doing here? You know, where where do I fit in?" 
Um, and I think that like, accelerated it. Before I, get to, I would have loved to see him with Ten Hag. I have to say, yeah. maybe Ten Hag didn't want him, but I think they would have, the fit would have been great. And I think Ten Hag could have got a really, really good Paul Pogba. I think if United had made a better decision back in December when Solskjaer went and they brought in Rangnick, that might have kept him because I think maybe within a week of Rangnick coming in and the coaches that he appointed, I think Pogba would have thought, nah, this, this, this club hasn't got its clue what it's doing. It's, got, it's brought in a guy that isn't the manager, isn't the coach. The, the, co the guys brought in coaches who aren't good enough because, again, Rangnick surrounds himself with coaches who hadn't you know, worked at a level that Pogba would demand. So, but Pop it, I think it's also, there's also a much simpler thing, which we all said because we followed Rangnick's career. Yeah. Rangnick plays a certain type of yeah. pressing high energy yeah. football that is what made his reputation. If we can see that you can't play that with Cristiano Ronaldo up front mm. at this stage of his career, you probably can't mm. play with Bruno, then none of these players fit mm. for what Rangnick made his reputation off of. I'm sure Paul, who actually genuinely loves football and knows yeah, a lot yeah. about football, I'm sure he could say it too. And he was saying, what is this? The, 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 you know, the Muppet Show, it's not going to work with it. You know, Rangnick, I think Rangnick could have worked, but not by being Rangnick. He could have worked by being a pragma uh, pragmatist, being something else, which I think ultimately in the end is what he tried to do, and that didn't work out either. But Yeah, I mean, obviously Pub wasn't fit for much of Rangnick's time, yeah. but whether he raced back for fitness, because he probably looked at what was going on and thinking, you know, I'm going to race back to fitness, and for what? You know, because the, play the team wasn't playing well, wasn't suited to the way, the way he played. And Pogba just thought, well, I've got six months to go. Let's just stay safe because in six months' time, I can go as a free agent. Why, why rush back to play for this guy who is making the team even worse than Solskjaer made them? How do we look back at, at Paul Pogba's time now at Manchester United, now that we know it's all said and done? Uh, you know, do we kind of empathize with the fact that he was not given that perfect environment that he's now since come out and actually said is something that he needs, which, which fair play? Um, or do you view it as just... Uh, Potential that was just never fulfilled, 50% him to blame and 50% the club to blame. Yeah, I mean, I'm completely biased here anyway, uh, <laughs> because I love him. But I think for me, the responsibility is shared, really. Yeah. He, he could and should have done more for the talent that he has, like Oggy said. I think the club didn't help either by being a circus for most of those six years. And when he wasn't so much of a circus, there was a Europa League at the end. Mm. His third season, by the way, with 13 goals and an assist only in the Premier League for a defensive infielder. They are decent numbers. It's not bad. And so I think it should and could have been much, much better. And, but I think a lot of people in, in this country especially will remember him as a flop, which I think is a bit harsh. Okay. I harsh. totally agree with that assessment. You know, he did have his, his good moments, his productive moments as well. The other thing I would throw in there is the injuries because I think they came at the wrong time. And just so a bit unlucky, mainly. I, I think there's an element to that, too. I mean, if you need to make a hierarchy of why it went wrong, and there's no question that it went wrong. When you pay this much money, plus all the commissions that they paid, yeah. and he leaves for nothing at age 30, then something's obviously gone wrong. Um, I would put poor decisions from United at the very top um, as the main reason, followed by Pogba could have done more, followed by injuries. I think United and Pogba let each other down, actually. I think United could have done more for him, brought more players in, better coaches, and invested in the whole football side of it more to help him. But then equally, he could have done more. He could have really seized the initiative and used his personality to be a leader. I know he wasn't the captain, but he could have, he could have become the captain. He could have been the leader by... But they almost used his personality against him. No, the, the personality as a, as a footballer within, within the dressing room, within the mm -hmm. squad, because, I mean, Jules might back me up on this, but... He left United as a popular guy within yeah, the club. Yeah. Was, People at the club, yeah, definitely. staff, players loved him. Yeah. And again, this perception outside the club that he was a troublemaker is just not true. He, he's not a divisive figure within the football environment. It's just what he's perceived to be outside of it. And then, yes, he probably did talk too much and did some silly things like dye his hair blue on the day of the Manchester derby, light blue. And Paul's pictures, you know, in Dubai, in Miami, when he when he was on rehab, which it didn't it didn't look the best optics. That's it's, it's just the timing, that sort of thing, but. Ultimately, yeah, the club let him down, he let the club down, but I think, I think more fault lies with the club because over six years they failed to deliver what they should have. Well, ultimately, the big question is what's next, even though we do um, feel like his heartstrings will take him back to Turinga because he's had such a great time there. He was loved there. He kind of got the environment that he talks about so much. Um, 
But the question is, how much more can he still offer? As Jules says, he's going to be 30 years old. He's coming off of a torrid time where, again, with injuries, and then when he didn't have injuries, he didn't exactly help himself. We're kind of still banking on the Paul Pogba that we saw from his last time in Turin. But how many years have passed since then? So what more can you think he offer, and, and what does the future look like? So assuming he does go the, to, to, to Juventus, I think, you know, as you pass 30, you're going to lose in terms of athleticism, um, but the technical ability, the vision, the intelligence is still there. I think Max Allegri was worked with him before. Um, I think he's very good at pushing the right buttons with Pogba. There's wonderful videos. Allegri, hyper-competitive. Um, there's, there's all these videos of him and, and Pogba challenging each other in like sort of football challenges and basketball challenges and stuff like that. And he really has a real fondness for him. Um, so I think in some ways that's the right environment, but the pressure is going to be extremely high because, you know, two consecutive poor seasons for Juventus, they'll be looking to him to, to take them back up. The style of play has changed as well. He's not going to have, he's got a good midfield, but certainly not on the level of when he was playing with Marquise and Pirlo and, and Vidal. So he will need to be a leader on that team. He will need to be what, you know, maybe he wasn't able to be at Manchester United. Jules, what do you think? Your boy can still I, I be think up there? I can do it, yeah. I think he can do it. I think I'm a bit worried about the injuries because yeah. he's had so many summers where he played, you know, Euro to the final, World Cup to the final. Uh, the last Euro is not so much, but it's, it's heavy on, on any player. And plus, this Winter World Cup, I think it might be a bit strange for a player who's been injury prone mm-hmm. for the last two and a half years, really. So, but I think the environment at Juve will help him. I think Max Allegri will help him that he was such a big part of his development as a youngster when he joined the club, yeah. the stick and the carrot that Gab mentioned was very much there and it worked, it worked. Now Paul is different and I guess Allegri is different, but they will have that relationship again. And I think for all the moves he could have got once he decided to leave, for me, even if what you said in Spanish, like, I guess, fits with the Juve and Paul It's <laughs> so like going back to an ex. Who? Yeah, Renate, <laughs> Renate, I still think that it's probably the, the best move and the best club that he could have got. You think, is it the Havre next? <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I'm not sure that I would have, I would have loved him in Paris uh, and back back in France in, in Ligue 1, in Ligue 2. Eventually, do you Eventually, think? Eventually, maybe. Eventually, I don't know. Do I think, think he might go to, to MLS after oh. Juve because this is a country that he, he, he loves dearly. Uh, and for him, you know, going to MLS at some point is, is certainly something that he would, would appeal to him. A little bit more swagger in MLS. Exactly. I think, let's be honest, he's left the sixth best team in England for the fourth best team in Italy. <laughs> so, but that shows you where he should be going to Real Madrid or, or Barcelona or a Bayern Munich. He should, that, this is the yeah. proper brand that we see. So, but, so yeah, his star has fallen a little bit. So Gab's selling of, of the move to Juve sounds like just what he was asked to do Man United, lead and rebuild the club, which we've shown he's failed at that. I would have loved to see him stay in the Premier League, someone like Chelsea or Tottenham or, or even Arsenal, just to, to show he can do it in the Premier League, to show Man United that you had this great talent and you failed to get the best out of it. Do you not think he would have thrived in the Premier League at the right club? Anywhere yeah, else? I think he has everything for English football. So, and I think he still has a point to prove, but obviously if he goes to Juve, he's not going to be able to do that. But. It's just a, such a, an untold story of Pogba in the Premier League. It could have been so much better, but wrong club, wrong time. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.